The title of this video is TDD, Let the Tests Drive. The first two letters in TDD stand for Test Driven. That means the tests drive the code. The test case comes first, and it drives the production code. If you write code when you don't have a test, then what's driving the code? It can't be a test, because there isn't one. If you write production code first, and write a test case after, then the production code is driving the test. That would be CDT, or Code Driven Tests, or something like that. But it isn't TDD, Test Driven Development, because the tests aren't driving. Many people who say they use TDD don't actually let the tests drive. They're doing something a little different. Maybe whatever they're doing is okay, but it isn't TDD. They may write several tests and then spend a chunk of time writing production code to make them all pass. It's like a large batch of test cases, rather than one at a time. They may write production code first, and then unit tests after. They may write the tests very soon after, maybe even immediately after, but it's still after, so the tests aren't driving. They may switch back and forth between writing tests first and writing production code first. Maybe they'll say on average they're test driving the code, or most of the time, or some of the time, or whatever. Anyway, I have a premise. The premise is that if we're conscientious about letting the tests drive the code, we'll get several benefits from test-driven development. Let's work through a simple example and see if the premise appears to be valid. To illustrate how to let microtests drive production code, we'll use the digital root kata. The idea is to take an integer and sum its digits. For the integer 942, we have 9 plus 4 plus 2 equals 15. The result has more than one digit, so we sum those digits. 1 plus 5 equals 6. We've gotten it down to a single digit, and that's it. The digital root of 942 is 6. Without further ado, let's start driving some code. We'll be using RSpec for the examples, also known as microtests or unit tests. Let's start with the simplest happy path behavior, a single digit input value. We have some boilerplate code for RSpec. It looks like this. Let's add a microtest for single-digit numbers. If the input value is a single digit, then there's nothing to do. The answer is the input value. That was pretty fast typing, wasn't it? Comes with experience. Let's run it and see what we get. And we get a failure because there's no method named compute in the application. That's where we expect it to be at this point, so we're red for the right reason. The first step in the TDD cycle, red-green refactor. Let's add the minimum amount of production code to make the microtest pass. That might look like this. Now we run the spec again. And we get no errors. Okay, so we're green. Good. But wait, you say. That's not a proper implementation. It only works for the number 9. What if we pass in the number 5? Well, okay, let's try that. Back in our spec file, we'll add a second example. This time, we'll pass in a 5, and we'll expect a 5 as output. We know this won't work, but part of the value of TDD is to have these failures happen in a controlled way and on a very small scale. Our expectation is the previous example will still pass, while the new one will fail, getting a 9 as output instead of a 5. And there it is. We're red for the right reason again, right where we want to be. Here's the simplest code to make all the examples we have so far pass. Let's run the examples to be sure everything is green now. But wait, you say. That's still not a proper implementation. It only works with single-digit input values. We're wasting our time with these meaningless test cases. We need to add a whole lot more code before we have enough to test. Well, that's an understandable impulse, but it's contrary to the test-driven approach. When we know the implementation isn't complete, we drive out the rest of the logic by adding microtests. When we have enough microtests to cover the intended functionality, and they're all green, then we know we can stop. Let's see how that approach looks here. We know we need to handle two-digit input values. Let's try the number 12. That should yield 1 plus 2 equals 3. The digital root of 12 is 3. Now let's run that and see what we have. 
Good, we're red for the right reason. But wait, you say. We know we're going to have to handle more than one input value. Why don't we go ahead and add the rest of the tests right now? Well, if we get ahead of ourselves and start cranking out a lot of tests in advance, or a lot of code without tests, we could easily overlook some detail that we're supposed to support, or we could create a bug without noticing it right away. That creates needless additional work for ourselves or others later on to debug the code. So TDD helps us avoid forgetting or overlooking things by helping us stay focused on just one small thing at a time. Also, TDD helps us avoid going too far and over-engineering or gold-plating our solution, because as soon as we have all the known functionality working and covered by microtests, we can stop. So, continuing in the same way, let's write a minimal implementation to make this new microtest pass without breaking any of the existing microtests in the process. This code might do the trick. When we run our specs, we get, yay, success. But wait, you say. There's still a fair bit of logic to add to fulfill all the requirements. This feels kind of clunky, with all the little tiny steps and running the tests over and over again. Maybe so, but didn't it feel good to see progress? Even these baby steps give us a positive feeling about how our work is going. If we just cranked out a lot of code without running it, it would feel like drudgery. Isn't this better? That's another aspect of TDD. You get positive feedback from every little step you take. You end up feeling pretty happy about your work, and that makes the time pass faster so you can get to quitting time in a good mood and full of energy to enjoy the rest of your day. That's a benefit that's just for us developers. Don't tell your boss about it, or they'll find a way to reintroduce drudgery. There's something we've been neglecting. It's the refactor step, the third step in the TDD cycle. We should have examined both our production code and our test code after we reached green to look for opportunities to simplify the design. Let's start doing that now before we forget. We could take advantage of a nice bit of Ruby syntax to reduce the clutter in the compute method. We run our examples again to make sure we haven't broken something. Okay, I think the code is slightly more readable, but I have to wonder if we need that local variable result. Let's see if we can get rid of it by using the ternary operator. But wait, you say, isn't the ternary operator bad? Well, some people think so, yeah. They find it harder to understand than an if-else structure. It's a basic feature of this programming language, so I don't think it would be confusing to anyone who's familiar with the language. If it offends, we could do it like this instead. This is another benefit of TDD. It provides a safety net for us to try different implementations. We've changed our implementation here, and we're confident we didn't break any logic that was working before because our test cases still run green. Personally, I like the ternary operator, so I'm going to reinstate that implementation. Our positive feedback makes us happy, and yet we know our solution is still incomplete. It only works for one or two digit integers. We need to handle integers of any length, when we were looking at the digital root problem, we used the number 942 as an example. We saw that its digits add up to 15, and then we had to add the 1 and the 5 to come up with the value 6. Let's add a spec to see how our current implementation handles the number 942.
That's not what we want. What's happening here? The code sees that 942 is greater than 10, so it divides by 10 to get 94, and adds the modulus of 10, which is 2, ending up with 96. According to the algorithm, we should add the digits in the number 96. That gets us to 9 plus 6 equals 15. Then we should add the digits in 15. That gets us to 1 plus 5 equals 6. Well, we're just doing the same addition over and over again, using the result of the previous pass as the input to the next pass. That's recursion. So let's call our compute function recursively until we grind it down to a single digit number, and that should be the digital root. And with that code in place, all our tests pass. Now at this point we would look for opportunities to refactor. I don't think we really have any such opportunities at the moment, so we can declare victory. One more thing to mention. Let's say a new team member joins us a year from now. A request comes in to change the code we just wrote today. What's the most effective way for the new team member to learn what our application does? You might say documentation. You might say cross-training. Sure, those things are somewhat effective, although not very. Now what if you or I pair program with our new teammate? We could examine the source code and try to figure out what it means, but it would be a lot more effective if the first thing we look at is the suite of executable examples. Let's look at them now. Notice how they describe each behavior exhibited by the production code. Do you think conventional documentation or source comments or a training session would be as effective for bringing our new teammate up to speed? I don't. And yet another point. How much time did we spend designing, building, and validating the application versus stepping through it in a debugger? The microtest cases give us an easy way to home in on problems in the code and to see how the code behaves under various conditions and with different input values. Another benefit of TDD, in my experience, is that I spend far less time in a debugger. It's worth mentioning that we haven't really finished creating this application. We could add more examples. We could add data-driven tests. We could add property-based tests. We could add mutation tests. We haven't considered edge cases, boundary values, exceptions, or bad input values. But I think we've done enough to achieve the objectives of the demonstration. There's a lot more to TDD than just this, and there's a lot more to software development than just TDD. Here we were focusing on the benefits of driving the production code from test cases. I hope this small exercise has demonstrated, or at least suggested, the following benefits for test-driven development. It helps us remember details and not overlook things. It helps us avoid over-engineering or going too far with our design. It helps us keep the design simple, it provides a safety net for experimenting with different implementations. It provides a safety net for refactoring. It gives us frequent positive feedback so we don't feel beaten down at the end of the day. It provides executable low-level documentation of everything the application does. It makes it easier to locate the source of bugs and keeps us out of the debugger for the most part. It creates a regression test suite as a side effect of writing the examples that drive the design. And it's equally useful for emergent design and upfront design and for greenfield development as well as enhancements and bug fixes. So if you haven't tried TDD, give it a try. And if you do, really make an honest effort to drive the code from test cases. Thanks.